Hello, welcome to Hypno Talk. This is Troy Parkins, and I'm here with Jenna Colasso, your friendly hypnotherapist. Friendly hypnotherapist, indeed. I, I love the the blue color. It looks like spring, spring sprung. It spring. certainly does, and it looks like I plan it. But pretty much everything I own is some variation of either pink or blue or purple or turquoise. So although it looks like there was planning involved. It's basically that I have a limited number of colors that I love. Oh, okay. So well, it all goes together. Whatever I do, I can't get it wrong. That's very good knowledge for our viewers out there regarding your color preferences. Which is important for them to know. I'm, I'm sure that's why they're tuning in today is to find out what colors I like to wear. Could be, could be. When we put that in our description down below, you know, that's a, that's a value proposition, I would say, as a marketing guy. However, what we are going to talk about, though, and this was very uh, compelling. You and I were, were kind of chatting beforehand on boundaries and what, what exactly, you know, when people say, uh, well, somebody told me that I should train people to, you know, to, to respect my boundaries or, you know, train people how to treat us. I get yeah. that. Uh, yeah. You know, then there's always that other part of it that they they try to make people change or make people do certain things what is the difference that you see of of of, of successfully setting those boundaries most of the clients that come in to say to see me will tell me they have boundaries but that other people are crossing them and other people are not respecting their boundaries so they'll say i have a boundary against being cheated on but that asshole keeps doing it. He is crossing my boundary or she is crossing my boundary. And what I tell them that is that you're crossing your own boundary. So you and I both know for all these years, we've tried to get other people to change and good luck with that. How do, how's that working out for people? <laughs> it doesn't matter how, beautiful and wise and loving and convincing and compassionate and caring you are or the other way right. like uh controlling dominating domineering right there's threatening too, right yeah there's the it north does, korean side that you know that doesn't work either yeah <laughs> but we train people how to treat us so there's a hierarchy to this boundary setting and in hypnotherapy we can start to become more comfortable with a new strategy because we're used to the old strategy and it's usually the ones that were in our homes when we were growing up as children um or at least somewhere in our history where maybe we we didn't we we were taught that if we're a good person and we're so loving and so generous and so selfless then that per that's how we're supposed to be and we can certainly see another person's emotional state we can see that they're insecure we can see that they're just afraid we can see that they might not feel confident and we love them but we're crossing a boundary when we're going over there trying to to manage their state of being and I didn't make this all up on my own. I would recommend uh, getting a book about boundaries by Nancy Levin. And she's a Hay House author. She's a, a, uh, a speaker and she's great on this topic of boundaries. But in hypnotherapy, we can start to undo some of those old assumptions because you can still be loving and wise and kind and caring for other people. But there's a hierarchy here of setting your own boundaries and taking your care of yourself first okay so if i have well, a boundary for oh i'm sorry you're gonna ask me no something. no i wanted to follow up on on that what you just said right there so how would somebody do that if i'm watching this and i say oh wow yeah that that sounds good but how do i do it the first thing is to make sure that you are very very clear on what matters to you and you become comfortable with how you're feeling. One of the harder things for me to learn to set boundaries was I felt that what I wanted was selfish. I had a long history of being over there and managing 
someone else's emotional state. I, I'm empathic, so I could tell how, whether it was a parent, whether it was a sibling, whether it was a friend or a lover or a husband or who, I was very conscious of what was going on for them. And they were so dear to me that I wanted to love that up and be who they needed me to be. But really it's like, we need to hold people as competent and capable of managing their own emotional states and take care of our own first. When I'm clear on the fact what I will and won't put up with, then I'm not gonna put up with it. And just because that person's insecure or entitled or sad or they were an abused person, I'm not gonna put up with that. There's no cajoling, there's no threatening, there's no passive aggressive trying to get them to change. There's just no, that's, that's not what I do. I don't put up with cheaters. And they can go do that over there and they'll either change or they won't, but that's not going to be what I do. That's so, very good. It, it, it's very clear. It yeah. seems to me what you're saying as, as one has clarity on themselves, it just kind of percolates out. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. And there's not just one universal way to be or one universal boundary that's good or bad. Stop judging your boundaries, you guys. Oh, that's a good one. My yeah. boundaries are going to be completely unique to me. I want to look inside my own self and go what resonates with me and what doesn't and i can respect someone else's boundaries that are different from mine but i don't have to it doesn't mean their boundaries are good ones or bad ones because there are there people is that good. are in yeah, there are people that are fine with multiple love interests and they're in polyamorous relationships I'm not judging them or saying that's wrong. But in my life, I would have a boundary against that because that's not, it, I don't feel good about that. So, and the same with child rearing. Other people that I've raised children, we've had kids the same age, have different set of what they tolerate and what they do not. No, that's yeah. a very good point. And, and on, a, on another micro level or, or on a funnier level that I, I was talking to someone the other day and I know a lot of people don't like garlic bread. Like they don't, right? I mean, hey, there's your boundary. I, I stand yeah. with people with garlic bread. But this woman said to me, I love it when people eat bunches of garlic and, and I can smell it on their breath. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't judge her boundary. Or right. non-boundary in this case. Yeah. So if I, yeah. So like if you have a boundary against a certain type of way that you, that you feel you deserve to be treated or that you choose to be treated a certain way, notice that, that life is trial and error. And when we met that person, we were bending over backwards because that's all we ha knew how to do at the time. And we didn't realize we were gonna develop a boundary about a certain behavior. Um, I was in a six year relationship once with someone who basically didn't pull their financial weight in the relationship and I felt kind of used and taken advantage of after a while because I didn't have a boundary against that. Because when we met, other things were more important. So by the time I realized I wanted a boundary, I was already allowing that person to overstep my boundary. So then it becomes, we need to help that person understand this is my boundary. And they either will or won't understand it. They'll either shift and respect the, the new boundary or they won't. And that can be scary, you know, cause you, you go, but I love you. I, I guess maybe I'll just not have a, or let you violate that boundary because because I, I'd rather have you in my life than the boundary. 
and yeah, that's fine, however, but that yeah. means there's not really a boundary. Well, and, and then if that is something that is important to you and affects you and that boundary that, that you're not defining. And again, I believe this is, comes to your second point, which is uh, clarity on you, me, that the person becomes resent. Well, I would become resentful if I had a boundary that I didn't communicate. I expect this other person to read my mind on it. And I kept letting this be quasi then I would become resentful. And I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that you either, you know, the relationship fails. And well, one or the Troy, other. that is like the, that you put that so well. You articulated that so well. This helps us. It's not about blaming ourselves for not enforcing our boundaries. It's about knowing that that horrible feeling of respect, of resentment, is so bad and it's knowing that there's a way to not have to ever have to go through that again all we have to do is set the boundary and if they cross it we allowed that crossing to occur exactly and we want to be in charge of the boundary when we say you keep crossing my boundaries i've set the boundaries i've explained it to you a hundred times and you keep crossing my boundary yeah that's being a victim yep. and it's placing blame and is trying to get them to change when the truth is i want to feel empowered i don't have to blame myself but i want to be in control of this boundary and the truth is i have the option of saying no nope. yeah <laughs> i'm not going to put up with that and then we have to actually follow through and so there's some inner nurturing and confidence building that I do with people so that they can have the courage to set the boundary. But oh, is life ever so sweet once you set that boundary because people know where they stand, everyone respects you, there's no more drama, there's no more resentment, there's more connection. We can get closer to people with boundary by setting our boundaries then than not you said it well so wait let, let's sum this up people if you don't want drama in your life if you don't want resentment in your life this is something like rewatch this video because this this is this is the we're, we're only scratching on the tip of the iceberg of course you know this is a 15 minute video we're just scratching on the tip of the iceberg but this is where our friendly hypnotherapist Jana says that you, you viewer out there, once you build your confidence, you work on this vessel, that you become clear on what it matters to you, what's important to you, and from there you 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 get to set boundaries and and I think the number one point you made the summation is you can't manage someone else someone else's affairs, state of being, emotions, come from whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in, in the comments section uh, the book by Nancy Levin. Levin, Levin. yes, L-E-V-I-N. And I would recommend following yeah. her also and, and reading anything that she has to say because she's brilliant. That's great. Um, yeah, That's great. Getting, this, getting the courage up to actually do the work. I love that. I love to do that so very, very awesome uh any closing thoughts ms friendly hypnotherapist wow just that other the the ability to emp empathically care and notice what other people are feeling their insecurities and the desire to help them is valiant but the number one thing you can do that will really help them is to hold them as confident and capable competent with a p competent and capable to make those changes when we try to placate them take care of them take responsibility for their lives for them that's not love that's enabling and at the end of the day that's not necessarily what's in their best interest now they may not agree with that so we need to be willing to withstand their 
anger and wrath. But I believe that everyone is powerful enough to make some really good changes in their life. I believe that adult children are powerful enough to go out and stand on their own two feet. I believe that insecure people are powerful enough to grow a pair and get secure. The tools are out there and available. They you, can you do it. One of them. Go see Jana. Hey, <laughs> if you want to grow a pair, go see Jana. I love that. Term. That's funny. I know we're joking. We're just joking. We're not judging. We're joking. Yes. No judgment here. Cool. I like that. All right. Well, well thank you. And thank you viewers for joining us. And I believe we have a live coming up, our live Hypno Talk coming up every Sunday, five o'clock. Yes, and we'll see you then. Have right. a beautiful rest of your few days. We'll, we'll yeah. talk later. Peace. Peace.